Hey guys, Carl here, and today we're talking about my 2000 4Runner. This is Susan. So Susan is 22 years old, going on 23, and she's a third gen 4Runner. Uh, like I said, it's a 2000. And I actually got her, she was gifted to me from my sister-in-law and kind of who she's named after. Uh, but whenever I got her, she was bone stock. And so basically everything I'm gonna show you guys, we're just gonna do a walk around, walk through, and show you everything I've done to Susan and what makes her like the ultimate overland slash hunting slash camping vehicle. I mean, just a really, really great platform for anything outdoors. I've been down to Tennessee multiple times, up to Wisconsin a couple times, Michigan, had an early bow hunting trip up to North Dakota and back. Uh, just very good, reliable vehicle. So here we go. Starting here at the front, this is an ARB bull bumper. Uh, this is actually uh, numbered and slated for the first gen Tacomas, but they, with a few minor modifications, they go on the third gen Toyotas. Uh, hidden inside the bumper here, I have a Smitty built X20 10,000 pound winch. It's got, uh, I believe it's half inch am steel uh, line on it. Uh, for recovery. I've got some shackles up here on the front. Uh, this is a little custom grill, kind of a DIY project, partial DIY project, gives it a nice look. Come on around over here. Uh, this is the, the tire and wheel combo I went with. Uh, these are just kind of a standard steel rim, nothing, nothing fancy. And uh, these are Cooper Discovery uh, ST Max tires been really happy with those. Um, I've got the same one on the back for a spare, so I'm doing a five tire rotation, getting a lot of life out of them. I did put a, a lift on this vehicle. Um, it's got a three inch Toy Tech lift on it, and I did put aftermarket uh, JBA upper control arms on it as well. Uh, that gets your, your caster angle back where it's supposed to be, so it's got a really nice ride, just as if it was stock. And then moving on back, uh, these are Rock sliders, again, kind of a DIY um, thing. They, they come partially assembled, but you have to weld all the brackets on them and then weld it to your frame uh, to finish the install. So uh, those are a nice touch. Protect the sides and it actually helps me get up into my, my roam boxes. We'll actually go to those next, or up top. So working our way up, these are WeatherTech, little rain shields or whatever they call those things. This is a um, Sherpa rack. This is called the Matterhorn. It's made specifically for the third gen 4Runners, so it goes front to back. Really, really strong. It's like laser cut aluminum. It's got a 80-20 cross member, so it's really stout. I've got twin Rome boxes. These are the 83 liter boxes, and they're on their custom mounts that Rome makes for them as well. So I've got padlocks on all four sides, but you can, after you take the padlocks off, these things literally un, unfasten and come off of the rig in just, you know, seconds. Inside their own boxes, I mainly keep recovery gear. I have, um, you know, some, uh, a little bit of foul weather gear, some gloves. I've got a braking bar, a couple of larger wrenches on the other side, a couple of dynamic tow ropes, soft shackles just pretty much everything I need for self recovery if I do get stuck. So that's more or less what's in here. Then up in the front, I've got a 48 inch high lift jack, again, to, for you know, changing tires and helping them with self recovery. Um, and also helping other motorists, you know, that you may come across on the road who need a little assistance. Moving to the back. This rear bumper is a DIY weld together bumper from True North Fabrications. Uh, basically, it's, it's partially bent metal and it comes in several pieces and you have to weld it together and finish it out yourself. Uh, I'm not the world's best welder as far as appearance, but they're strong and that's what matters. Uh, it comes with a receiver hitch on it so you can tow trailers and whatnot. I've got a, uh, a actually it's marketed as a motorcycle rack. It's got a 400 pound capacity. I had to do a, some modifications on it to clear the spare tire, but I, I actually haul my e-bike on here, you know, for hunting public land. Uh, wherever I can use them at. So I had to basically re-weld some brackets and move this part out farther away from the, the rig. Um, then I've got a, a full swing out here on the for the tire. Just unlocks there. 
And then I've got a pin I pull up over here. And then it swings back and locks into place so it doesn't go anywhere. And here in the back, I'm kind of set up right now just for, for whitetail hunting, you know, bow hunting locally. Um, I've got my I've got my tethered one sticks here, the new backpack that we're coming out with. Uh, you know, I just got it loaded out for, for whitetail hunting. I've got keep my deer card in here. This actually, uh, I can uh, freehand it, you know, pull it, or I can, it also made, it's made to hook up to my bike as well. Uh, keep some really uh, ultra light waders. These are tingly waders that I put some custom uh, uh, first light pants over. And then I've got my tool bag back here. I pretty much have what's in that tool bag i can pretty much take susan apart down to the last bolt i even got some specialty socks in there if you know for if i have to change out a cv axle on the fly or something like that i've got the stuff i need to do that these are molly panels for the rear windows these are made by victory 4x4 and uh, once you install those you can pretty much strap on tie on hang about anything you want i happen to just i have a lot of tethered pouches that we make uh, a few other different ones up there. You know, some are just prototypes and just miscellaneous stuff. I keep, um, you know, toiletries in here. I keep flashlights, extra headlamps. I've got tire pressure gauges. I've got a pair of, uh, an extra pair of readers in there. Um, and this one, I've got two big LED spotlights that actually sit on the ground if you need a lot of light. Um, over here on this side, I've got some extra rope. I actually put in one of our roll-up pouches uh, for a saddle and put up there um, just different yeah just different things miscellaneous got my first aid kit very extensive first aid kit um, I, I've got that from uh, Uncharted really cool company for for uh, any type of outdoor adventure emergency type uh, save yourself gear I guess you'd say I have a jump pack in here this thing's come in handy a lot uh, I do have jumper cables as a backup up in one of my roam boxes, but this is just a jump pack that works really, really well. It's, they say it'll jump like a diesel truck like six times, you know, with two batteries. So it's more than enough for, for the forerunner. It's pretty much it back here. All right, we get inside here. I've done actually quite a few upgrades to Susan on the inside as well. Some of them just aren't quite as noticeable. I put upgraded every light inside to LEDs even the uh, the dashboard lights you know for the speedometer and tack I put a, a, a double din aftermarket radio in I use an Apple iPhone so it, ha it has carplay on it so I can run my GPS and, and different things in there uh, works really really well you know back dome lights again LED so the the inside has been upgraded as well um, that's about it for the front all right, back here, um, I have some little custom mounts I made to hang my my longbow here. Uh, my compound bow hang here as well. Uh, again, kind of set up for, for hunting locally. Got my saddle back here, and you know my, my predator and predator pack, rattle and antlers. And uh, generally, there'll be a few more miscellaneous items. I might have some drinks or you know just extra pair of boots or something like that in here. So that's pretty much it. So I did put a snorkel on Susan. And no, I don't do a lot of deep water river crossings. Um, that seems to be what most people think that they're for. Uh, my wife did ask me after I put it on, why did you put a periscope on your forearm? <laughs> so yeah, it's, it can look a little odd to some people. Now the main reason I put a snorkel on my forerunner is to get cleaner, cooler air uh, coming into, into the system, into the intake, you know? Almost every vehicle, this one included, they take air in from down low inside this front passenger fender. That's where the air comes from. It's dirty air and it's hot air, especially off you know uh, black asphalt and stuff like that. So to get the air intake up here is gonna get you cooler and cleaner air. That was my number one reason for putting this on and it looks cool. So this is Susan. I hope you enjoyed that walk around and if any of you guys are planning on maybe getting an older vehicle, to turn into some sort of a hunting rig or an overland rig, maybe this will help you out. Now, 
you don't have to do everything I've done. You know, you can get pretty ridiculous with some of the stuff you can do. There's so many aftermarket things, especially for these third gen forerunners. But you know, go out and find you one before the prices get out of hand because they're pretty popular rigs. And just enjoy it. You know, you can take it bone stock, and they're such a capable vehicle, and they're so reliable, and they'll just go about anywhere. There's just a few minor little things uh, just to be aware of, you know, for for these forerunners. But it's nothing major. But yeah, it's it's not what you buy, it's what you build. So you can totally, you know, just DIY the crap out of something and make it your own, which is kind of what I've done here. So that's Susan. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Go out and find your rig and do it up.